Hello, welcome back to the Hallian 6 video tutorial series. And today we're talking about the low frequency oscillator, LFO. So we get to this from the uh, zone tab and it's the LFO section. So we've just created a simple synth sound here. Uh, synth zone with saw wave and a little bit of filter. So I'll turn the classic filter on, give it a bit of cut off. It's got a really simple sound. Now in order to show you the LFO, I'm also going to need to introduce another component that we'll talk about in the next video, which is the modulation matrix. Just going to dip into it today, just to get the LFO up and running. And the reason we need something else to help us is because the LFO on its own doesn't make any sound. It doesn't do anything. It, it has no value until it's connected to something else and the modulation matrix is where we connect things to other things. So what is an LFO? Well, it's literally an oscillator, just like a sine wave or a saw wave or whatever, that, that's cycling very slowly. It's a low frequency oscillator. Now the types of frequencies around which the LFO operates are typically below the level of human hearing. So we don't hear these waves as sound they're used as modulation sources to change other parameters. Now, the value of low frequency oscillators is that they are repeating. So whereas an envelope has an attack and a decay, you know, you could have a multi-step decay phase or whatever, at some point it's going to have done its thing. A low frequency oscillator is about repeating something cyclically over and over again. So here we have our low frequency oscillator, which at the moment is just generating a sine wave at one cycle per second. So if we start there and we draw up to that point there, that is one cycle. So what we're seeing here is two, three, four, five and a half cycles of the low frequency oscillator. But it's not doing anything. When I press the note, we're not getting any LFO influence from anywhere because we've not told it what to modulate and this is where we will just dip very briefly into the modulation matrix which is this section over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the LFO is going to modulate filter cutoff and this is the amount by which it's going to happen so if we go back to zero if I press my key, now start increasing this value, this amount. Okay, roll all the way up to the top. So that's, it almost sounds like a square wave there because it's so extreme, the sine waves are so extreme that they're. Uh, increasing the filter to the absolute maximum and then the absolute minimum which is basically taking all the sound away and then the absolute maximum so that's a more sensible kind of value okay and we're going to leave the mod matrix there for the time being we'll deal with that in depth in the next video so now that we've got the LFO up and running it's doing something it's connected to the filter cutoff we can have a bit of a play around with the parameters inside it to get an understanding of the kinds of things that, that we can do. So let's start from the top and work down. Firstly, we see these little tabs one and two. That's because we have two completely independent LFOs. So if I make the second one a sawtooth that can be used as separate modulation sources so that they're exactly the same thing just independent so we're dealing with LFO1 here not the LFO we're dealing with LFO1 we saw that this is the uh, the waveform option so let's have a bit of a run through these and I'll just get this going should be able to talk over that fairly comfortably Straight up and straight down. I 
Okay, now this is the first one where we need to go beyond this drop down. All of the, the rest of them up until this point have been pretty straightforward. You can see the wave, you can see what it's doing. But when we go into pulse, we just see these really, really thin lines and it sounds horrid. We're getting these really tiny clicks. We can turn this into a square wave using the shape knob. At exactly 50%, we have a perfect square wave. So half on, half off, half up, half down. While we're over here, the frequency knob is pretty obvious. Go all the way down to almost nothing, so that would take, what, 30 seconds to complete one cycle? Carrying on with these, ramp is the opposite of saw. And while we're here, we can see that the shape knob doing a pretty obvious thing, just knit backwards to prove that shape actually operates on all the waves. So we introduce complexity into a sine wave. log can be turned into a ramp by setting the shape to 50% but on either side we get logarithmic curves sample and hold there are two different types of sample and hold sample and hold one uh, generates a random pattern where the uh, each individual step can can either go up or down randomly so you see this little shape here. There are four moments when the wave ramps up each time, steps up in frequency. Whereas with sample and hold two, it always toggles between up and down. The amount of upness and downness is what varies, but fundamentally they are both kind of random frequency generators. And then it chooses a frequency to stick at, holds that for a while. And then at the next period, chooses a new value. Now, we can get a really cool effect with sample and hold. By increasing the frequency quite a lot. You get one of those kind of nervous computer chatter effects. kind of a unique sound, difficult to generate that sort of effect from anywhere else. Phase allows us to offset the LFO uh, forwards in time by up to one entire cycle. So as I uh, increase this knob, you'll see the wave shift to the left as the start point basically travels forwards. Pretty easy to see visually just by going all the way up to 360. So we're at the start of this upper band over here and that is one complete cycle have a look at that in sign mode and so if we move to 180 so here we are at this kind of halfway up the up curve and at 180 we'll be halfway down the down curve it's close enough and 360 we'll be back to halfway up the up curve and basically wrap back round round on yourself how the LFO is triggered uh, is set with sync mode. So everything that we've done up until now when we've been pressing keys has been with sync mode off. If we switch to tempo plus retrig, now the, the host BPM, which is currently 159, weirdly, is going to directly inform how the LFO gets generated. So instead of the frequency being specified in time, it's now specified in fractions of beats. In uh, one beat mode with a 60 BPM song speed, then we're gonna get one oscillation every second. 
by set the host tempo to 120 twice as many if I send this back to 60 but this to 1 over 8 we're back to twice as often and then obviously you get faster and faster and faster now in terms of whereabouts in the LFO the wave is triggering at the moment if I make this really slow so that was quite a harsh sound that was yep ah there's a soft one there's a soft one soft soft hard what's actually happening is that the LFO is cycling in the background doing its own sweet thing and when I hit the key wherever it happens to be it's catching that point of the curve and then beginning to draw the LFO shape from that point on if I engage retrig mode now every single time I press the key you're going to get exactly the same firing of the LFO soft 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 it's going to be soft every single time it's going to sound the same as the filter introduces itself the best way to show you tempo and beat because uh, it can be a little bit difficult to penetrate what's going on here first things first with tempo and beat mode um, retrig doesn't actually have any effect you're not retriggering things from keys now it's taking where it's going to play on the LFO from the current song position and the best way to demonstrate this I've set the frequency to 4-4 four, four, and our song counter is back to 1 so when I play a note that's what it sounds like and every note sounds like that if I switch to beat number 2 of the song get a different sound at beat number 3 different sound again four is the last one and then when I go to beat number two sorry bar number two the beat the first beat of bar number two that sounds the same as it does there and any beginning of bar in the song is going to sound the same so it's taking where it's going to play its LFO from the beat position of the song that you're in. So if the song is actually playing and you're playing notes, then you'll get different tones over the course of the bar as you play. And it determines the number of beats over which it's going to operate by the frequency knob. So at the moment we're in 4-4. Four, four, so it's counting its entire wave as four beats worth of length. Right, so let's deal with envelope mode. So we have an envelope that we can draw to give us a variation when you can see what it's just done to the LFO. At the moment, we're in one shot plus sustain, which means we've got two nodes, but we can have more. So now we've got a fade out. And now we've got a hold as well. So this is the attack. So this is our fade in level, how long it takes to reach this point on the um, envelope. Delay is how long we wait before even beginning to draw the envelope. Hold is how long we stay at the maximum level for. And then fade out is how long we spend getting back to zero. So you have five seconds worth of setting on each one of these. So the maximum envelope that you can draw in envelope mode is 20, 20 seconds. You can turn different components of this on and off. So ordinarily one shot plus sustain with no delay or fading 
is your standard. That's where we started from. So that's just applying the whole LFO all of the time. And then you start to introduce little bits of variation. So now, so we get a static filter. Try again. So I'll just bring the delay down a bit and fade in. Hold for five seconds doing the big waves. Little wave and then we steady down to a static tone. So those are all of the features of the LFO as a, an independent unit. We'll start flexing its muscles in the next episode when we go on to talk about the modulation matrix. These two things are very closely entwined and it's not often, frankly, you use one without the other. So make sure uh, to check out the next episode when we talk about the modulation matrix and start putting a little bit more context around these things. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.